Hey everyone, uh, at the risk of sounding like a broken record, thanks again for your questions to my 200 subs video. So I'm going to take my first stab at answering them, and I'm guessing I'm going to have to break it down into two or three parts, because I'm probably not going to get through all the questions, because I'm very, very <laughs> slow and ranty, as you might know if you've uh, watched any of my videos. And But uh, thanks very much for your questions, and there were excellent questions and a lot of them are very tough and very interesting to answer so I've enjoyed thinking about uh, at least the first batch which I'm gonna answer now and I've had comments on my microphone taking up the screen and or my microphone sucking both of which uh, are true so I'm hoping if I stay exactly here and the microphone is there that'll kind of figure itself out but I'll probably move and then you won't be able to hear anything uh, sorry about that I need to get a new microphone I've dropped this guy a couple of times and he doesn't play well with my webcam for some reason um, but I will start off with a question by Cthonius, um, a fellow Aussie. Uh, by the way, I'll be putting all the channels of people who ask my who ask questions down in the below bar. Lots of them I've been subscribed to for a long time, and they're all great people. So go sub to them. You've probably already subbed to them, um, but if you haven't, make sure you do. So Cthonius asks. Uh, if there is a species that hits an evolutionary dead end, should we allow that species to become extinct naturally or should we basically help them along? And his example is, what if the panda bear, they eat bamboo, what if somehow the bamboo disappears and then the panda, you know, it's kind of condemned to die out as the bamboo disappears. Should we help the panda along? Um, so my my thing here is, it depends. It depends on the suffering of the animal in question. Uh, just because they're dying out doesn't necessarily mean that the individual animals can't be enjoying uh, their lives. And if they are, then there's no problem for me. You know, it's gonna be sad to see, in this case, panda go extinct. But you know, if panda are having a great time while they're at it, that's fine. Um, if they're suffering, you know, so for example. The bamboo is disappearing, so the panda are all starving to death. Uh, then it becomes problematic, obviously, I think, um, because they're suffering, and that's really what I care about, the suffering. Um, but still, I find it very difficult to make that kind of judgment on behalf of, you know, even an animal that doesn't really have um, conscious, well, they have conscious thought, but not rational thought so but I I don't know how I could decide whether that animal's life is still worth living or not um, well you know I mean that there would be obvious cases that's the thing so as a principle I wouldn't interfere I would just let nature take its course but at the same time when you see a member of that species that's like dying from whatever the problem is uh, then I think uh, you know, basically euthanizing it would probably be the humane thing to do. So, actually, I think there's a real-world example that fits pretty well, and that's the uh, Tasmanian devils. So they're ugly little critters, but um, uh, they're quite unique, and they live in Australia. Um, and they have this very rare form of... It's an infectious tumor, which I think it's one of the only infectious tumors in the world. And it grows in their like the, on their mouth, and basically once it gets to a certain stage, uh, they can't eat anymore and they starve to death. So let's say we know that we can't actually do anything to prevent this tumor from eventually wiping them out. Would I then say, okay, let's kill all the Tasmanian devils? No, I wouldn't. But I would say that you know if we could go around, if you see one of the devils where the tumor has reached the size where it's starving to death and it's obviously already not eating anymore, um, then it may very well be the humane thing to put it out of its misery. Um, even that said, you know, it's... I don't really know, like, if an animal could make a rational choice, would they really, even if their life is fairly miserable and filled with pain, would they choose to end it? And that's another question. I mean, you know, if it's, like, really seriously the last death throes, then I guess... You know, you could say, well, you know, probably for the best. But even if it's, like, dying, but just in the process of dying early on, um, I think it's it's difficult. And 
my personal feeling is probably not to interfere unless it's at the kind of final final stage of, of life where there's just nothing but pure suffering ahead for the animal um, so in summary basically no just but you know in general if you see a tremendous amount of suffering that's something you should try to address in whatever way you can um, so Tatooskin72 asks the question if you could use a time machine to change uh, historical events um, would you and which ones would you change so uh, Tatooskin didn't specify but I'm gonna do three historical events um, and so yes first of all I would and I think I mean it's a problematic thing because obviously you, you take on this terrible kind of burden and responsibility because what if it doesn't work out what if you make a change and it makes the wor world worse in a way you know that's on you but at the same time if you have that opportunity and you don't try to identify places where you really think you could improve the world and you don't improve it um, then all of the people you could have saved are also on you so it's actually not a situation that you know I would be very comfortable in uh, being put into that position but I would choose to use the time machine um, and so my first my first intervention would be uh, in Europe early 20th century so you know the obvious one would be to try to get Hitler into art school or that failing you know maybe um, have something happen to him that ensures that he can't become Hitler uh, I think that would have probably prevented World War II or at least made it uh, significantly less terrible I hope um, the other thing moving even maybe a bit more forward something around World War One, maybe preventing the assassination of uh, the Crown Prince of Austria uh, Prince Ferdinand um, which you know that could be that might have prevented World War One and if World War One hadn't happened then World War Two probably wouldn't have happened so that might be something worth trying on the other hand what if you know what if that ends up just you know taking longer for the war to develop and then it turns out even worse uh, so it's a it's a very tricky one but I try something like that probably try the crown prince first and if that didn't work uh, go with trying to uh, f channel Hitler into something where he wouldn't do the terrible things that he did uh, the second one I would go back to the time when you know the plagues were hitting Europe the black plague and smallpox and all of that um, so I think it wiped out something like half the population in Europe it's obviously had this huge detrimental society effect on Europe and Europeans um, and I would I would basically tr see if you know consult with a couple of doctors and see if we can come up with a package where they could you know uh, basically create a vaccine and allow people of that age to actually reproduce it so that they could produce vaccine for smallpox and the plague and you know that would save obviously a lot of lives um, in general taking knowledge of microbiology back to that time and seeing what we could do to maybe get people familiar with that um, would be huge because I think you know modern medicine is one of the biggest kind of lifesavers and reducers of suffering so introducing that early on would have been a good thing um, and failing failing uh, failing that I if I couldn't come up with a good way of getting them to make their own make their own uh, vaccines then at least teach them something about hygiene because they were of the opinion that it's smells that make you catch disease uh, and yet they were uh, you know just terribly terribly dirty and uh, filthy filthy so teach them a little bit about the whole sanitation thing and the sewers are a good idea um, and also that would have as a bonus if we could eradicate smallpox from Europe then when the first settlers went to uh, discover the new world 
they wouldn't infect the local population with smallpox, which according to one estimate I read, I don't know if it's accurate or not, but uh, that estimate was that about 90% of uh, Native Americans, not just in America, but you know, South and North Americans everywhere, died of smallpox. Um, so if that's the case, because the European settlers were kind of immune and they were spreading it, if that's the case, and if the European settlers went to America not having smallpox, then that would have probably meant that the Native Americans wouldn't have been wiped out like they were, um, and maybe it would have been a situation more akin to India, um, or at least Native Americans could have uh, established and maintained a parallel kind of civilization to the European one, uh, which would have been nice. Um, and so that brings me to two, the last one, and I, uh, you know, sorry for, you know, any of my religious viewers, uh, warning this is going to be pretty blasphemous, but as an atheist, I think the Bible, like all other holy texts, are man-written, uh, man-created things. And in my view, there is a bunch of stuff that could be in the Bible that could make it uh, a whole lot less um, an instrument for people who want to do bad things. Not saying that there aren't lots of good things in there, but uh, there's there's also rich material for justifying bad things. So, um, you know, all of those little uh, get-togethers where they decided what would go into the Bible or what not, or maybe even visiting some of the people that were writing the Bible, and just give them a bit of instruction about which parts to emphasize a little more, which parts to leave out, you know. Um, yeah, put in a lot of, you know, that love your neighbor stuff, that don't be greedy, that that good stuff, keep that in there. De-emphasize the Old Testament a little bit, that eye for an eye stuff, that's definitely out. Um, that Those lines about, about you know, homosexuality and uh, abomination, eh, just cross out. Um, you know, and basically fix that up a bit, and I think that would really help. I guess we could even go back and, uh, you know, do that to the Old Testament, and then we would get, like, a three-for-one, because then all the Judeo-Christian uh, traditions as well as Islam would be positively influenced. So I think that would work really well. And also put in an important proviso, like maybe at the beginning of the Bible, as like the first foreword. Um, this Bible document is meant to be read with an open mind. As you're reading it, God works through you, and it's your interpretation through the love of your fellow man that should inform you, not the literal word of the Bible. Because I think people interpreting it um, tends to actually make for a much uh, better outcome from people learning positive things from the Bible rather than them trying to literally, word for word, um, take various passages that have to do with various nasty things happening to people and what God hates and so on and so forth. So those are my three. And I mean, if I had, if I had more goes, you know, I guess you could run around and try to fix up the world forever. I there's a bunch of stuff the Romans like um, uh, Elysium when they killed all the the, the, the Germanic people, like uh, or or when they wiped out um, Carthage. Those would be things where I would go and maybe. You know, uh, yeah, the Romans did a lot of nasty stuff, so. But then again, what if I did that and we didn't have Pax Romana? Maybe that would have been even worse. Hmm. But, you know, given that, I would just be jumping around history, trying to fix things, and then probably they'd get worse, and then I'd go back and I'd create time paradoxes, and the universe would end. So it's probably a good thing that I do not have that power. But thanks all uh, to Tuskin for that question. That was really interesting. Um, next question is a set of questions by L1981. I think I got that year right. Um, so why can't I think of any good questions? Probably either a lack of enough of your favorite drug or an overabundance of it. That's usually what it is for me. Um, so once you get your drug levels in in sync, uh, you'll be nice and productive again. Um, what's the best remedy for a cold? And I don't know if you had a cold. Sadly, I took a long time to answer these questions, so my sage advice may not be as helpful now. 
but my number one home remedy is sleep because I really like sleeping especially when I'm physically miserable which I often am when I have a cold so if I can get to sleep then that would be my favorite remedy as a matter of fact you know that whole sleeping beauty thing like I know I don't quite have the face for it um, but I would be really pissed at that king I'm you know you can sleep forever and ever and in that case it's not even like you're ever worried about waking up and everyone you know is dead because they were all asleep as well so that was pretty kick-ass. I could have just slept away the millennia. Yes, I'm very lazy. Very, very lazy. Um, and then, Frendo, if you had the choice of killing a million people, uh, or putting, saving a million people, sorry. If you had the choice of saving a million people by putting one person to death, would you do it? Um, and I guess, you know, first of all, if it's the one person's fault, then I guess then it would be kind of self-defense. But what if it's an innocent person? Um, and so that would make it a lot trickier, obviously. Um, and, you know, you could you can obviously ramp this up to the maximum degree and say one person or every human being dies. Um, or you could or you could downgrade and say, you know, would you hurt one person to help a lot of other people maybe not even kill them and in all of these cases um, let's say all of these they're all innocent the million people are innocent and the one is innocent um, and I think that's really tough I mean first of all the question is could I do it I don't know um, I certainly you know I, I, I don't know if I could kill someone I guess most people probably can if they're in the right situation but that's you know that's out there but as far as ethics goes I think it would be the right thing uh, you know cause, you know it's this kind of situation where both things are terribly unjust and I think not helping people that you could be helping in a way is also it's also ethically wrong so you're either being ethically wrong towards a million people or ethically wrong towards one person um, and you could say obviously that you know you're directly killing them makes your responsibility somewhat higher but I think you know I think the ethical responsibility of not helping a million people would outweigh that so I think the ethical thing would be to kill that person even though it would be terrible but my proviso there would be just because that's kind of the ethical imperative I think that wouldn't free you from the actual deed I think after that you should still see yourself as someone who took innocent human life and you would have to um, you would have to try everything you could to recompense for that as a matter of fact if you had the choice between killing that person and killing yourself then killing yourself would be the ethical action um, but if you had to kill that person then that burden would be on you and you would have to try to make it right in whatever way you could obviously you can't bring that person back but you know whatever and you would have to take the ethical consequences of having killed an innocent person for yourself I think as an ethical person that is what you would have to do um, so I'm already at 18 minutes for these questions so I'll do the other questions or at least the second bunch of questions in the next video. Thanks very much for your questions, and I'll see you guys all later.